Jesus was born for you. Amen. I'm going to read from the book of Isaiah and then also the book of Luke, and then we'll get into this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Can you say Wonderful? Then Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Powerful declarations about who Jesus was going to be. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, deity himself, amen, was coming to earth. But notice what Isaiah says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Then when um, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angel appeared to the shepherds at night. They were tending their flock. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings or good news of great joy. Good news of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And then verse 13, I love this. The Bible says, and suddenly... There was the angel, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Hallelujah. That was an amazing time. Of course, Christmas is a time when people remember, we remember the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christmas is so many things to different people. But as Christians, we remember that our Savior was born Onto the earth, came onto the earth. Amen. It's interesting because heaven praised God at this event. Heaven rejoiced. A host of heavenly hosts came down to earth to thank God, to praise God, and to declare. The angel declared that there's great news, there's joy, there's good news of great joy for all people. Folks, Jesus was born for you. Jesus was born for you. In, in Luke 2.10, it says, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, all people, all people. The good news was to bring great joy to all people, all races, all nations, all cultures, all sexes. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, He came for you. Jesus came for you. You were on God's mind when He sent Jesus. Canada was on God's mind when he sent Jesus. Every nation on the earth was on God's mind when he sent Jesus. The Bible says, there is born to you this day in the city of baby. There is born to you. I want you to know that God sent Jesus for you. That's a good place to raise your hands and say hallelujah. But why did Jesus come? Why did God send Jesus? That is a question we have to always remember when we celebrate his birth. You see, Jesus was born for us because of God's love. Jesus was born because of God's love. That's my first note. Jesus was born for us because of God's love. He's the supreme expression of the love of God, the awesome love of God, the great love of God. Jesus is that expression. God cannot love us more than the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. He was sent because of love. God sent his only son. It speaks of deity, his only son for our sakes. John chapter 3 verse 16 in the Amplified Version says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. I want you to put your name there. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized you. He dearly loved and prized you. Oh, yes, you may be going through some stuff. But I want you to remember this, that God loves you so much that he gave his best, his son Jesus. Verse 17 says, for God did not send the son into the world to judge and condemn the world. That is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And that word saved is not just the saving of the spirits. You know, it's it's, 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 it's also, it's a a complete word. Sozo. 
that we may be saved, we may be made whole. Because we are broken. That we may be made whole in every area of our life. That's why he sent him, because of his love for us. God sent Jesus. Jesus was born because of love. And you know Jesus was born because of sin. There was a sin problem in humanity. You know, you and I, the Bible says that we all have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. Sin is mi- missing the mark of God's, of God's high standard. The Bible says that um, uh, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In fact, it says, as high as the, the heavens are to the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts higher. We can never meet God's standards because he's a holy God. And we are fallen man. So there was a sin problem. And Jesus was born because of that. Bible says in Romans 3.23, for everyone has sinned. You're part of that everyone. It says everyone has sinned. And we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all fall short. And that's why Jesus had to be born. Because we couldn't make, meet the mark. Amen. Sin separates us from a holy God. Sin breaks fellowship with God. You know, and sin has serious temporal and eternal consequences. There's a consequence for sin. Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Death. And I love that word, those, those three-letter word, that three-letter word, B-U-T. But, glory to God. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody say amen. So Jesus came because of sin. He came because of love. He came because of sin. And because he came because of sin, he came, he was born to die. That's the interesting thing about Jesus. His mission was to to actually come here to die for humanity. So he was born to die for us. When the angel revealed to Joseph that Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. This is what the angel declared in Matthew 1, 21. She will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. That was the reason why Jesus was born. To save us from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was born because sin, there was a sin problem. And he came to save us from sin, to reconcile us back to God. Oh, folks, this is a good time to say amen. He was, he was born so that we would, he, he would die for us and reconcile us back to God. Romans 3.24, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. You see, sin had a problem with, in terms of us flowing with God. You know, it had broken fellowship with God. In the Garden of Eden, we see that after Adam and Eve sinned, you know, the Bible says that they they, they realized they were naked and they tried to. And and when God came in the middle of the day to, 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 to commune with them, they were afraid. There was a certain break in fellowship that was as a result of sin. But Jesus came to regain, restore, reconcile us back to God. He came to take care of the sin problem. Amen? So it says in verse 25, actually I will start again. God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. He was a sacrifice for sin. So he was born to take care of the sin problem and to reconcile us back to God. The Bible says people are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair. Basically, he's a just God, a righteous God, and he took care of the sin problem. And that's why he sent Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus. So you and I have been made right with God if we believe in him. And because of that, we have peace with God. There's no more enmity with God. We have peace with God. The wrath of God is no longer our portion. The goodness of God is. Amen? So Jesus was born for these reasons. Jesus was also born for us so that we would not perish but have eternal life. That's a biggie. He was born so that we would have eternal life and not part perish. Now, John 3, 16, I'll read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, a lot of times you think about eternal life and we think eternal life is life, you know, everlasting life, life that goes on and on and on and on. It is that, but it's more. 
It is that, but it is more. It's not just an ending, you know, eternity with God. Glory to God. You can spend eternity with God, and that's a good thing. But it's not just that. There's more to it. You see, eternal life begins here on earth. I said eternal life begins here on earth. Bible tells us in John 3, 36, he who believes in the Son has eternal, everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Notice what it says. He who believes in the Son has. He has. Not he will have. In other words, eternal life is now. Glory to God. Eternal life is now. John 5, uh, John um, 6, 47 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Question, do you believe in Jesus? I said, do you believe in Jesus? Then you have eternal life. He who believes in me has everlasting life. It's interesting. Jesus literally defined what eternal life was. He defined eternal life. So we know, can know, I mean, among other things, we can know exactly what eternal life is. John 17, 3 says, and this is eternal life, that we may know you. This is eternal life, that you, we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That is what eternal life is, knowing God. Knowing God intimately, having relationship with God, having communion with God. That is eternal life. Folks, that is so precious that now you and I can know the creator of the entire world. We can have communion with him. Not know him in just our head that we know this about God, but know him in our hearts. Have relationship, have intimacy with him. That word know is the same word that Adam knew Eve. Intimacy. And the Bible says that this is what eternal life is, that we may know him and Jesus Christ. Remember, Philip asked um, Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus, and Jesus said to Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So notice what he says, that, the, that you may know, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Folks, that's powerful. Knowing God intimacy is the ultimate blessing of life. I know that sometimes we think money is the ultimate blessing or, or prosperity is the ultimate blessing or having health. Those are all good things. But knowing God is eternal life. Knowing God. How many of us pursue knowing God? Sometimes we think of eternal life just as, oh, we're going to spend eternity with, with God. But God wants to, to, to spend time with you here on this earth so that you experience the eternal life right now. Amen. Eternal life includes the abundant life. Did you hear what I said? It includes the abundant life through Jesus Christ, and it's experienced through our knowledge of Him. John 10.10, 10, he says, The thief comes not only to steal, except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. How many of you want the abundant life? Hallelujah. Eternal life includes the abundant life. And it includes the knowledge of him. That's why in 2 Peter 1, 3, the Bible says his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, the abundant life, and godliness, eternal life. Glory to God. And notice what it says, through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. What did Jesus say? say? Jesus said that eternal life is that they may know you. So we know that eternal life, that abundant life through the knowledge of him. And of course, it goes on and says, and through his great and precious promises. So Jesus was born so that we would experience abundant life. Life to the full. Satisfying life in every area of our lives. Amen? Jesus was born. Because of the curse of sin. Sin had consequences. Sin had consequences. The earth was completely blessed by God. Everything was blessed. God blessed man, said he should be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. That was God's blessing upon the earth. But as soon as man sinned, then God declared a curse. And the woman was cursed. 
in terms of having labor and all that kind of stuff. And the earth was cursed. And, and Adam said, you know, he said that, you, you know, with, with, with hard labor, you're going to bring forth from the earth. It wasn't like that before. And then when God began to show man his standard through the law, you know, if you fulfill the law completely, the blessing of God was there. And if you disobey the law, the curse was there. So you look at Deuteronomy chapter 27, 28, 29, and all those chapters, they show you what blessings are in the eyes of God and what curses are. But you had to attain it in the old covenant. You had to attain the blessing through fulfilling the entire law. The curse, the sin attracted the curse. Disobedience attracted the curse. But Jesus was born to take care of that problem. He was born to take care of that problem. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, you are a blessed people because Jesus was born. I'm a blessed person because Jesus was born. The curse of sin has been broken. And now you are blessed. Amen? Galatians 3.29, now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Hallelujah. So Jesus was born because of the abundant life. Jesus was born you know, to take care of the sin problem and, and in, terms, uh, in terms of the curse. Jesus was also born to show us the way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. He came to show the way of the kingdom. He came to teach about the kingdom, the kingdom principles, so that we would reign in this life. Amen? You know, the Bible describes people as, as, as sitting or walking or living in darkness. In other words, when you're in darkness, you don't know where to go. You can bump into things. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? If you come here at, at 12 midnight and the lights are off and you want to go to the back, you can bump into some pews. You know, in your own house, if the lights are totally off, you know, you may not be able to find your way. And, and that is why Isaiah the prophet um, prophetically spoke about Jesus being the light in the darkness to show people the way. Isaiah 9 to the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Darkness represents so many things. Darkness represents, in the Bible, represents a lack of order. That's why, upon the, you know, at creation, the Bible says that the earth was, 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 was dark, you know. And, 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 and darkness filled the whole surface of the earth. It was, there was no order until God spoke. Amen. You know, darkness also represents and signifies ignorance of God's will. And therefore, people living in sin, you see that in Job chapter 24, 13. Like you don't have to turn to that. You know, but darkness represents hopelessness, despair, discouragement. You've heard the term um, that, that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's like you're, 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 you're despairing in life. But Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He said, I'm the light of the world. Just um, um, John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. What life? Eternal life. The abundant life. The God kind of life. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus is the light of the world. He came to show us how to live. The life that he, he died for, for us. Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, prophesied about Jesus in Luke 1, 78. Through the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring, day spring from on high has visited us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. He was actually prophesying about taking this from um, the, the prophet Isaiah and saying, Day spring has come. Jesus is going to be that day spring. And day spring means the daybreak. Glory to God. It means the dawn, the sunrise, because he's the light of the world. Amen. So he came to show us how to live life. Show us how to live life. And finally, Jesus was born to bring restoration and joy. How many of you lost things in the past year? Many of us have lost things. 
Many of us have lost dreams. Many of us lost, have lost health. And Jesus came to restore all of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He came to restore and to bring joy. To bring joy, great joy is what the angel said. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus basically described his purpose. Luke 4 from verse 18. And he was quoting from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. And I want you to show the heart of, you to see the heart of God here. In Isaiah 61 verse 1. You know, this is what Jesus quoted from. He, he quoted from a lot of this. And I just want to read it so that we see the purpose of Messiah, why he came. He said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. There's good news for those who ha ha have very little. There's good news to those who are poor, not just spiritually poor, but financially and materially poor. The Bible says that he lifts up the poor from the ashes. He lifts up the, the needy from the dunghill. And he says he seats them with princes. There's good news for the poor. It goes on, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. I'm telling you, this is an age and a time where so many people have been wounded in their hearts. People are wounded emotionally. But Jesus was sent to bind the brokenhearted. To bind the brokenhearted. To restore you to that fullness in your emotions. Some people have been abused. Jesus came to restore. He's the balm of Gilead. He says to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisons. It's incredible how addictions are, 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 are running rife right now in the people's lives. Alcohol, drugs, pornography. Jesus came to set the captives free. People are bound by these things, but he came to set you free. To proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners. If you're a prisoner of anything, I'm telling you, Jesus was born to set you free. Hallelujah. It says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And it goes on, and the day of vengeance. Didn't, Jesus didn't quote the last part of this, because this is not the day of the Lord's vengeance. This is the day to, uh, of the Lord's favor. This is the dispensation of grace. This is the dispensation of his favor. The dispensation of Jubilee, where he restores things to us. Hallelujah. It goes on to comfort all who mourn. Are you mourning? Are you in a dark place? The comforter is there to comfort you, to lift you up, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Are you seeing the heart of God here? Why he sent Jesus? He sent Jesus so that we would be restored to the image he has us to be. You are, you are, the Bible says he has made us to be kings and priests unto him. You are destined to reign. And all of this is giving the picture of people who are not in their rightful place or rightful position. But Jesus was born to restore us, to provide for those who grieve, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of gladness. Instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. I'm telling you, Jesus was born for you. He was born for you. And that's why the angel said, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Because the reason why Jesus was born was for so many amazing things that would know God. That would have fellowship with God, communion with God, would have peace with God. And that he would restore us in so many ways that we would have eternal life. And that eternal life includes the abundant life. All coming through our knowledge of him and his promises. That the sin, that sin problem was taken care of by Jesus. So that the blessing, by faith we would receive all these things. Glory to God. That Jesus would show us how to live our lives. He is, there's a, you know, in his word, there's a manual for how husband should, should treat a wife and wife should treat husband. There's a manual how parents should treat their children and children their parents and how we should relate to one another. That's him showing us the way to life, how we should, our attitude to work. All of that is in the scriptures. Our attitude to government, how you and I have to pray for government, how we should pray for our city. It's all showing us the way of life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. This good news of great joy is for everyone. For the entire human earth. Human race. Everyone. However, the one condition 
is that you believe and accept. And although the angel came and declared to the shepherds who were watching over their flock, came to declare this good news for all people, this great news that was going to bring great joy to humanity, the scripture unfortunately tells us that not everybody will receive it. It's like you have this present that somebody has given you and it's under the tree. But for some reason, you never open it up. You never open it up. You never receive it. You never accept it. It may be for $5 million. But you never open it up. I'm telling you something more precious than $5 million has been given to you. Jesus. John 1.10 says this. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. And then verse 12, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. The condition is that you believe, that you receive, that you accept Jesus. That you accept that he is the gift that God has given humanity. He's the, he was born, that you, you, you believe that he was born for you personally. Because of the sin problem, acknowledging that you have sinned before God. And the only way you can get back into fellowship with God and be reconciled to this holy God is through Jesus Christ. You have to believe. You have to accept. You have to receive. He says to all who believed him. And accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Children of God. In other words, suddenly we have relationship with God. We can call this holy God, this creator of the universe, our father. We can say, Abba, father, daddy, father. We have relationship with someone who is so awesome. Awesome God. But now you have relationship with him. But you have to believe to receive. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, and you say whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Then verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That word saved is being made whole in every area of your life. Every area. Saved means, that word saved is the word souls. It means wholeness, health, prosperity, fullness. That is why eternal life starts now. God wants that for you. And then verse 18 says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Oh, church, I know there's a lot that happens around Christmas. You know, families meet. Sometimes it's difficult for some families because somebody's departed or died. Or sometimes there's tension in families, you know. Sometimes it's, I don't like shopping. I like presents, but I don't like shopping. Amen. You know, all the, the hustle, the bustle, and all that kind of stuff. But never lose sight of the real reason why Christians celebrate this period. is to remember the birth of the Savior. I'm telling you, you have to remember. Just remember why Jesus was born. It was because of love. Great love for you. It is because he cares about you. The Bible says God is gracious, he's compassionate, he's slow to anger, he's rich in love. Yes, you may be going through difficult circumstances, but that doesn't change the fact that God loves you. The expression of his greatest love is Jesus Christ. Another reason why Jesus came was to show us the way. He is the way. Another reason was to give us eternal life that begins here on earth. It includes the abundant life. And ultimately, the greatest blessing is to have fellowship with God. Have fellowship with God. You know what? Unfortunately, a lot of us Christians, we, 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 we don't value that. 
We don't value having spending time with God. How do you spend time with God? You spend time in His Word. You spend time in prayer. You spend time worshiping Him. You, you want to get to know Him. But that, Jesus said that is eternal life. It, 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 it supersedes anything else. That is eternal life. It says, if you believe, you have that eternal life. The opportunity is there for you. Then Jesus was born because of the sin problem. You're no longer under curse. You're under the blessing because of Jesus. If you believe, all these things are yours. I don't know if everybody here knows Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But I want to encourage you this Sunday, 2019. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm speaking to those who are watching online as well. You may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You may be living your life and you know that you're in darkness because you don't know what's happening. Jesus is the light of the world. And he came to die for you. He was born to die for you. He was born for you. I want to encourage you today to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept him, to receive him, so that he'll give you the right to be a child of God.